Uh, so wrapping up the discussion from last time, I guess we had gotten to this point where we, we came up with just a general relationship for shear stress, we had, which is this mu u infinity over delta m. That's our approximate uh, model for shear stress. Uh, prior to that, we developed an approximate model for h, which is uh, conductivity over delta t. So these are relationships that depend on the boundary layer thickness. And that's kind of where we left off. There, it, expressing things in terms of boundary layer thickness isn't always the easiest way to, um, to capture it. So let's, let's do a little bit of manipulation to get back some non-dimensional um, parameters that we can then use and, and, and develop correlations and things like that. So the first non-dimensional parameter that we're going to talk about is an energy parameter. Um, if you've had heat transfer, you've heard of it, but it's the new salt number. Right, so the new salt number. It's often called NU, uh, and it's defined to be the heat transfer coefficient times some characteristic length divided by the conductivity. Okay, uh, so if I happen to know the heat transfer coefficient, and I happen to know uh, fluid property, conductivity, and the characteristic length, I can come up with this non-dimensional parameter, new salt number. And what the new salt number is telling me is it's sort of a... Um, a dimensionless measure of how effective heat transfer is in a, in a convective situation. Because right, you see that there's, there's a fluid property, a, a length scale, and then H. And we know H is a measure of uh, you know, power per unit area, this, uh, per unit area per, per unit uh, de degree of heat transfer in a medium. So OK, this is the Neusselt number uh, definition. Let's use this to, um, to kind of understand what, what's happening in the situations for convection. So we have new salt number, let's say um, new salt number is approximately equal to, uh, using our approximate model for H, uh, we're gonna say that's uh, K over delta T times, uh, what's my characteristic length for, let's say flow over a flat plate? We decided that was the position X, um, so then we have uh, x over k is uh, remaining in the denominator. So it turns out that the new salt number is actually just simplified down for a flat flow over a flat plate, x over delta t. So another way of thinking about the new salt number is that it's a length ratio. With the length ratio being my characteristic length over the boundary layer thickness at that position. Remember, delta T is the boundary layer thickness at position X. So if you have a, a geometry where the characteristic length changes as a function of position, right? you have like a flat plate, you're going from X equals 0 to some position, um, the Neusselt number is going to change. right? If you have, let's say, a, a, a pipe, right? we can draw a pipe here, uh, where you have some diameter. And you know that as, as fluid comes in, you, it's going to start developing, and you're going to get at this point where the boundary layers actually intersect, this internal flow. Um, the the uh, boundary layer thickness is going to stop changing as a function of the depth into this pipe. So for something like a pipe, you would use the characteristic length to be d, right? or actually the hydraulic diameter, which in the case of a pipe is just uh, d. So in that case, you can actually uh, see something like the new salt number in fully developed flow is equal to 3.66. It just happens to be a constant number. And, and again, that goes back to this idea that's a, a ratio of some, some characteristic length, which is in this case not changing, to boundary layer thickness. When this becomes fully developed, that stops changing, so it becomes a constant. So uh, think about the new salt number in, in terms of the context that it's being applied. right? So that's a non-dimensional measure of the heat transfer coefficient. That's the new salt number. For the friction factor, uh, let's see, friction factor, uh, it would be uh, the following relationship. So we're going to say shear stress is our dimensional parameter. So shear stress is related to the momentum of the fluid. So that's uh, captured with 1 half rho u infinity squared times some um, non-dimensional coefficient. And we'll just call that C sub f. That's our friction factor, our friction coefficient. 
So if we use if we use the conceptual model that we had developed before, where we said tau is approximately equal to mu times u infinity divided by delta m, um, and then sub that into that expression, right? so this becomes u infinity over delta m is equal to one half rho u infinity squared times c f. Um, and then solve for CF, we get CF is equal to 2 times mu over rho u infinity delta m. Uh, we can rearrange this a little bit and say 2 times mu over rho u infinity uh, times, uh, let's see, the square root of the Reynolds number over 2x. Right, that's our model for delta m. So, uh, 2x over square root of Reynolds number, so that becomes inverse there. Uh, and then s further simplifying this, I guess you see that there's, uh, over here, let me just circle in a different color. So x mu rho u infinity. That's uh, 1 over Reynolds number, right? So we can further simplify this and just say this becomes um, CF is equal to uh, 1 over the square root of Reynolds number. Sorry, I should make this approximate, right? This is, our, this is still our approximate model because we're using this approximation for tau here. So the friction coefficient is just 1 over the square root of the Reynolds number. That means I can compute the shear stress for a given velocity by computing the Reynolds number and taking the inverse of that. That's what the friction coefficient is telling you. It's telling you how the actual resulting force relates to just a basic expression of the momentum of the fluid, which is what we have here. Now, if you want the exact, uh, exact formulation, it becomes 0 0.664 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. If you've had fluid that, fluids, that looks familiar. This is for laminar flow, right, laminar flow. Okay, so you have these, these two representations. One is non-dimensional heat transfer, the new silt number. Another is non-dimensional uh, shear stress, which is our friction coefficient. All right, so those are just kind of different ways of representing this, um, these uh, forces. Uh, really quickly, uh, since I want to move on to the derivation part of this, um, let me just give you... Yeah, I'm just going to run through this. There's different ways of writing this out, so I'll kind of go quickly. Uh, what we want to do is, is write um, expressions for the new salt number in terms of the Reynolds number and Prandtl number, and same thing for the friction coefficient. So to do that, we're going to say the new salt number is equal to approximately x over delta t. And then using uh, delta t is approximately equal to 2x over square root of Reynolds times Prandtl is our approximate model. We can then say um, x over uh, new salt number is approximately 2x, or square root of Reynolds times Prandtl. And then rearranging, solving for new salt, we get new salt is approximately equal to 1 half square root of Reynolds times Prandtl. Um, so that is our, say, approximate model, again, for the the expression of new salt number, but now it's, it's in terms of uh, non-dimensional parameters, right? Reynolds and Prandtl number. So you can, you can compute the new salt number this way for laminar flow. The exact formulation for this is actually uh, new salt is equal to 0 0.332 times Reynolds to the 0 0.5 times Prandtl to the 1 third power. So again, like just comparing this with what we did on the previous slide. On the previous slide, we're, we're saying, I'm coming up with a relationship for, for new salt number based on its definition, right? That's how you'd express it, uh, or how you'd get uh, heat transfer coefficient to relate to new salt number. Here, we're saying I can actually compute the new salt number using flow, prop, uh, flow characteristics. Okay, uh, for the uh, friction factor, let's do something like the following. So we're going to uh, use something called the Reynolds analogy. For the friction factor, 
Um, and what this is going to do is it helps us relate the boundary layer growth for, um, for heat transfer purposes with boundary layer growth for momentum and then uh, develop a friction factor, factor relationship there. So for the Reynolds analogy, we say, again, using new salt is approximately equal to x over delta t. Uh, and then solving for this, delta t is equal to x over new salt. Uh, we're also going to note that uh, we had previously said cf is equal to 2 mu over rho u infinity delta m, where delta m then uh, can be solved to be 2 mu over rho u infinity cf. All right, just rearranging those. So what I'm going to do now is say that with this Reynolds analogy, I'm going to say Delta T is approximately equal to delta M. Right? For some fluid, let's assume that these boundary layers grow at the same rate. Okay, so let's say delta T is approximately equal to delta M. If that's true, then I can go through and rearrange this. And let's go through the math here. It's X over nu salt on one side is equal to 2 mu over rho u infinity CF. I can uh, solve for new salt number, and with a little bit of algebra, this becomes new salt is approximately equal to one half Reynolds number times friction factor. Okay. So once you've got that written down, what is, what is the value of this? Right. Why why bother expressing the new salt number in terms of Reynolds and friction factor? Got, I've already got expressions for it. I can evaluate it up there. I guess the value of this is to say, if I know something about um, the friction factor, if I know something about the forces in this system, I can relate the forces in the system to heat transfer in the system. So I could go and measure force in a device and compute heat transfer in that same device. Yeah? Um, so when you say delta M is Yes. 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 So this breaks down, but um, great segue. My next uh, thing is to state the place where it doesn't break down, which is something called the Chilton Colburn uh, analogy. And this is stated as th the following, which is new salt approximately equal to one half Reynolds times friction factor times Prandtl to the one third. Okay, so these are all kind of approximate models, but um, what it yeah what it gives you is a relationship between forces and heat transfer, which you know coming into it you might not have expected. It's not something that you necessarily anticipate, but you think about it, it's really obvious. You're saying something about how boundary layers grow. Boundary layers relate both to, sh both to shear stress and to heat transfer. So it's natural that there would be a, re a relationship here. OK? Any uh, questions on this? When you use the Chilton-Colbert analogy, you would use the other two? So you would use this one in the case where Prandtl is not equal to 1. Um, and it's a good like last resort, I would say. So normally what you're going to do is you're going to uh, look at a correlation to compute new salt number. A correlation, or if you have an exact solution for, for some limited well-known case, you can use that. But if you have a correlation, you'd use a correlation. If, if you don't have a correlation, but you do know something about, say, the, fr the friction factor, this is when it becomes really handy.